Hi, I'm Mark Tar, and today I'm talking with Amanda from the Student Engagement and Career Development, and she's going to be helping me create a really strong resume. Hi, Amanda, how's it going? Good. How are you doing, Mark Tar? Super good, super good. good. Super quick. A lot of people have told me that it's so important to have a strong resume. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering why. Well, it's helpful to think of this from an employer's perspective. So, um, you know, a resume is more than just a list of all the experiences, everything that you've ever done. It's really your opportunity to show an employer how you're a match to a particular role that you're applying for. Um, hiring managers, recruiters, they're super busy. They, just like all of us, they don't have a lot of time to spend uh, reviewing resumes and you know trying to gain insight on you know if this is a match so it's really helpful to do the work for them show them how you're a match to a particular position sometimes employers recruiters hiring managers they're super busy and just like all of us they don't have a lot of time to spend reviewing a resume um, sometimes the time that they might spend is only 10 seconds so it's really important to do the work for them, show how you're a match to the position, and you know, make it easy for them to see quickly how you're a match to that role. Well, you said 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So how do I grab their attention then? So you can really grab their attention by having a resume that's well organized, um, really succinct and clear, well formatted, and then another important thing is to hold their attention so make them want to read further and you can do this by um, having a well-written resume really showing what your achievements have been so we tell people to focus more on your achievements versus tasks in your role your achievements will tell an employer kind of based on what you've already achieved they'll gain insight into what you might potentially achieve in that particular role if you're if you're hired. Um, resumes also show things that we don't usually think of, like uh, your writing skills and attention to detail. And that comes across in how much you've you know, written and edited your resume. Um, it also shows the knowledge that you have of the field that you're going into and the position you're applying for. Um, and it also shows how much time that you took to, that you spent to create this professional representation of yourself. But you know, Amanda, it also can be very frustrating to write a resume when you don't have a lot of paid experience. And sometimes you can't get a job without experience, but you also can get experience without a job. So what are you supposed to do then? Right, I can understand that. Um, and I do, I hear this from a lot of people, not just students. Um, and when I have this conversation with people and we're working on resumes, it's rare that um, I find that somebody doesn't actually have experience to write about. Uh, so I think it's helpful to remember that employers really value a lot of different types of experiences and a number of different experiences can show your skill sets. So thinking of things like on-campus involvement, leadership experience, involvement in clubs and organizations, these things can show your skills. Relevant coursework, class projects, that can show knowledge that you've gained and how you've applied that knowledge. Uh, involvement in sports, that can show how you've worked on a team and it can kind of speak to your discipline. Another really important one is community service. So volunteers do a lot of work. Um, they're not paid. So, you know, a lot of organizations that have volunteers have them doing a lot. So I've known volunteers that have experience with fundraising. They do community outreach. They plan events. They coordinate events. Um, so this type of experience um, can be very valuable on a resume and can really speak to skills that somebody has utilized. So with all of your experience that you can think of, it's important to think of the skills that you've developed, how you've applied those skills, and that's what will really start to translate to kind of that world of work. Thank you. That was very insightful. Good. But you did also say to highlight my skills. Mm-hmm. What type of skills are employees actually looking for on a resume? Skills that employers are looking for can vary depending on the industry and the job. Um, you know, a patient care technician is going to have a different skill set than somebody, than an auditor. So it's important to kind of know your field and 
and the skills required within the different jobs that you're applying for. Um, but a lot of employers value transferable skills. These are skills, if you think of the word transferable, skills that kind of move with you from one environment to another. So if you've worked in customer service, this can kind of start to translate to customer service or even client relations in a different environment. These skills are often referred to as soft skills and they're things like collaboration, critical thinking, uh, leadership. Uh, so employers really value those. They also value technical skills, um, what we call hard skills. These are things like data analysis, proficiency in a certain programming language, even knowledge of a second language. Those are uh, technical skills. So I think it's important to have a blend of both on your resume, depending on kind of the field that you're going into, um, and to give concrete examples of your skills and how you've used those skills. But what about things like passion, hard work, being on time? Do you put those type of things on a resume? That's a good question because I see that come up often. So those are more characteristics versus skills, and they're, they're very important. Uh, but it's important to really evaluate when you're thinking of skills to add to your resume. Evaluate your skills and pick ones that are measurable, uh, that skills that can be verified. That being said though, you can show uh, your passion or that you're hardworking through how you write about your experience. So focusing on your achievements, which we've talked about the importance of, let's say that you've achieved something in a particular role, you implemented something, or you made a change, or um, something that you did had a positive impact on an organization. That can really show how hardworking and how dedicated you were. So you can kind of show those things by how you write about it. But again, it's important to kind of give those, uh, pick skills where you can give concrete examples of that. Now that you basically help me to know what to put on a resume, how do I actually get started? At this point, it's helpful to not worry too much about the format or the structure. Just start to get some ideas down. So whether you're working in a Word document or you're working on paper, um, start to get your list of experiences. You kind of want to pick as we talked about, if you're thinking of involvement in clubs, part-time jobs, uh, community service, write down the organization that you worked with or where you kind of had this experience and maybe the title that you held. And then once you kind of have that structure, start to jot down some notes within each one. It, it does help to work uh, in reverse chronological order, which is the order of a resume. So that means kind of starting with what you're doing currently. So if you have a part-time job right now, you'd start there and start to go backward in time. And that's the order that a resume would follow. So you start to kind of write down notes for each of these experiences that you've had. Think of skills that you've used in each of the experiences and just jot those down. I think it's also helpful to kind of use some questions that can help you get to some of this experience. So think of if you're ever given a task or a project to complete, and if so, how did you complete it? Um, what was the result of this? What impact did you have? We all have impact in our work, so trying to kind of think of like, what was it that you impacted? What was the main responsibility of your role? What was the most important reason you were there? What skills did you use, or what skills did you develop? I also think it's helpful to think of if you were ever recognized for anything in that role. So let's say it's a part-time job. Did your supervisor ever compliment you for something, something that you helped with or helped move something forward? Those things can kind of give insight into a skill that you have that you might not have thought of. And then also if you worked with a team, how many team members did you work with? This can kind of start to add some numbers to your notes and that can be really helpful. So at this point, you're just trying to get some notes together. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you're really trying to think of those things and answer those questions for each of your experiences. Thank you so much. So basically, it doesn't need to sound like a resume just yet. Right, you don't have to worry about it sounding like a resume. It should, um, you wanna be as inclusive as possible so you don't leave anything out. At this point, you're really just getting some ideas down. You know, we'll kind of start to make it sound like a resume later. Thank you, yeah. appreciate it so much. Absolutely, Mokhtar, you're yes. very welcome. Thank you. Sure. If you have questions or need help, visit us in Life Lab or find more information on our website.